Hey guys, what's up? Spectre here. Earlier this week, Paradox Interactive gave us a beautiful extended gameplay trailer, which I broke down for you all. But recently, an 18 minute long gameplay demo was released, and I'll be tearing through every detail and boiling it down for you. Let's jump in. I'll be showing a slightly abridged version and following it up with some critique, comments, and concerns, as well as commentary throughout. The game demo immediately begins with a decision, choosing your Thin Blood discipline. Players will choose from Chiropteran, taking on the supernatural aspects of a bat, gliding across the city or summoning swarms of them into battle, Mentalism, which will allow you to do things like walk the astral plane, manipulate objects from afar, or toy with your victim's mind. Or Nebulation, allowing you to take the form of fog or mist, and even use that form to choke your victims. We get another short glimpse of this apartment from the trailer. The atmosphere is absolutely gorgeous, the radio mentioning something about sex trafficking, which may have something to do with a quest. As the player makes a somewhat clumsy exit, they're notified that they've entered a masquerade area. The main square, which seems to act like one of the game's hub areas, also seems to be called Pioneer Square. As we head into Atrium, vampire dancing is definitely confirmed. It's just not, um, it's not very good. But upstairs, we see a somewhat familiar face now being introduced as Elif. Hello there. I'm happy to see you accepted my invitation. This is also our first look at some branching dialogue. You know, you don't have to wait for business to come see me. I may be busy, but I can make exceptions for you. the right person. It's worth noting that it seems as if we could pursue some sort of relationship with Elif, perhaps in the same way that we could have flirted with main characters in Bloodlines 1. But the Nosferatu most likely know where he is. Once you find Slug, all you have to do is purchase some information off of him. It sounds simple, I know. And while I would usually handle something like this myself, Slug has made it clear that he doesn't trust my people, for whatever reason. So, can I count on you to get this done for me? We're off to meet Slug, another one of the characters that we've met in trailers. It's worth noting that as we pass areas of interest, the UI calls our attention to them. There's also a prompt to attract NPCs, which I imagine is one of the mentalist powers. The game will also make you aware of masquerade blind spots, small areas where you can get away with using your more advanced and glaringly obvious vampire tricks. A lockpicking minigame is confirmed as we stealth our way into this building to meet with Samuel. As we get another look at branching dialogue options, it's worth pointing out that the dialogue options vary from three to six different options. You can find Slug under the freeway, a bit south of the square in a place the locals call the jungle. He's smart enough to hide among the homeless down there, but not quite smart enough to do it well. You'll find the entrance near King Street Station, but you'll want to watch yourself. Slug is a coward, but he survived this long on his own, so he's bound to be a handful. He's also not the only one you'll need to look out for. Lots of unsavory animals in the jungle. It's worth noting that NPCs walking around don't seem to be too lively, but this is an early build, so we can hope that changes, and I'll get to more of my hopes in a minute. It seems that our various powers are accessed via a radial menu. After feeding on enemies, we can see a plus 10 pain appear. No word yet on how this will affect your mental state after multiple feedings in combat. We can confirm that the world of Bloodlines 2 is not perfectly seamless, but rather made up of distinct areas. This is a plus for those worried about graphical downgrades, as small individual cells are always easier on your console and PC than an entire open city. 
There seems to be a bit of verticality, though we can only speculate as to how extensive that'll be. I imagine there'll be hidden areas only available to users of Glide or Mist form. It seems Slug isn't so eager to meet us and makes his escape. Another look at the radial wheel reveals the nebulation powers, although I think he's using a different power to survey the landscape. In an example of one of those hidden routes, vents can be a great pathway for users of mist form, opening up new avenues of entry. Again, we can see that added stat, although this time it's plus one delirium. Hey, I told you shit stacks to stay out of this side. You get your fix when we say so. Now turn around or I'll stomp you into the goddamn mud. This guy doesn't seem all that nice, but talking to him does seem to open up more dialogue paths than before. Negotiation, coercion, and humanity are all checked here. All? Okay. Using their vampiric abilities, this vampire has dispatched of the NPCs rather quickly, but a lead pipe gets the job done. Although you might be bringing a pipe to a gunfight, your vampiric strength seems to even the playing field. Eventually, we make our way to our reluctant friend, Slug. We have six options at this point, with coercion and negotiation skills making a reappearance. Start. What do you want? You're making the right move. This city, no loyalty at all. Doesn't matter what you do for them. Do they ever bring you up in the ranks? No, just use you when it's convenient. We're all fighting over scraps here. Plenty of cities these nights where, if you're ambitious, you can get ahead. Trust me, you're better off. Funny, I don't remember telling you my name. They sent you, that it. Get close before you make your move. We'll see about that. Okay, rats! Time to earn your cheese! It seems, though, that our smooth talking isn't enough to smooth this over as another fight breaks out. I have a lot of thoughts on combat, but stick around till the end for my list of concerns. Once we finally get our hands on Slug, we're given the choice to decapitate him, as he doesn't have the info that we came for, one that the player takes. No, please, no. These choices seem to be locked in once we make them with no visual option to go back. Vampires definitely shouldn't need doors, and in Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, they apparently don't. Have you met with Slug? Then you've done nothing. This will not sit well with the Pyramid. Apparently, Elif is in cahoots with the Pyramid, possibly making her a Tremere. And that's it for this brief mission. Now onto some concerns that I have. And before I dig into them, this is an early build of the game, a work in progress. Let's temper our reactions given that fact. Blowing things out of proportion only makes devs scared to show us early content. The good. Spaces seem atmospheric and beautifully rendered. I absolutely love the ambience and in-game world. The UI is also nice and minimal, with subtle hints that remind you that you're playing a Vampire the Masquerade game. Loading screens didn't seem too egregious, but that will also vary depending on your hardware. And finally, I love the animations for your vampiric powers. Now onto the things that can use improvement and polish before release. Combat seemed extremely stiff, and at moments it was almost endearing in a sort of retro way, but unless that's what they're steering into, the combat seemed extremely wooden, and the animations need to be smoothed out. As I pointed out during the demo itself, NPCs seemed a bit boring. They all seemed to be drunk or in a daze, which could have something to do with the plot, or perhaps they're just humans on their way home from a night at the bar. But some more variety in their behavior would definitely be welcome. I also hope that writing gets a bit more love, as lines seem very shallow. Take this text message, for example. Or some of the dialogue that we get a glimpse of. It all seems a bit too rudimentary, especially given the talent behind this game. 
Again, this is a work in progress and early build. I don't think that we should be too quick to judge this game harshly, given those facts, as these issues are just the kind of thing that gets hammered out during the rest of the development cycle. I'm incredibly excited to finally have seen this extended look into gameplay and look forward to seeing more in the future. What are your thoughts? Any hopes for the final release? Let me know in the comments below. And make sure to sub for more Vampire the Masquerade coverage and for coverage of games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Borderlands 3. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.